Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. So in this video, we're going to look into chapter 9 of IGCSE Computer Science, the kinetic particle model of matter. And as we all know, matter can exist in three states, solid, liquid, and gas. And in the following slides, we are going to study the properties of each state of matter. And let's look into it. And for the size, for solid, the size of solid is often rigid and also they have fixed shape and fixed volume it cannot be squashed unless you exert a large amount of force on them whereas liquid is not rigid uh, water will flow from one part of the container to the other part whereas gas is no not rigid no fixed shape no fixed volume it can be as large as it can when the gas expands and also they can be squashed and as for the shape you can't um, really change the shape of a solid unless, again, you deliberately exert a lot of force on it. But whereas liquid, they happen to take over the space of a container. So let's say you have a, a cylindrical container, they're going to be cyl in cylindrical shape. But whereas if you have a cuboid shape, they're going to fill the cuboid instead. Same goes to gas. They are the same. So here are how different states will change. When solid melts, it becomes liquid. And when liquid evaporates or boils, it becomes gas. And you can reverse the entire process. When gas condenses, it becomes liquid. And when liquid undergoes a process called solidifying, it becomes a solid. So in this chapter, the main topic is the kinetic particle model of matter. As we learn in chapter 7, 6, kinetic energy means movement. So the word kinetic relates to movement. So we are basically studying how the movement of the particles is like in each of the st three states of matter, which is solid, liquid, and gas. So the kinetic theory suggests that as you heat up particles like water and gas, they will gain more kinetic energy and move faster. But if you were to cool them down, on the other hand, you are going to slow down the particles. So, uh, the, if particles loses all its kinetic energy, that means all the particles stop moving, it is not then possible for the substance to go cooler. And that is what we call absolute zero. It is the temperature at which particles have no kinetic energy. They are not moving at all. And this temperature is exactly negative 273 degrees Celsius, which is also zero Kelvin, as we'll look into later. So let's look into more differences between solid, liquid, and gas. And for the arrangement of solid, they are closely packed, whereas liquid, you can see that even though they are quite close to each other, they are not really in a shape, regular shape, they're not together. Whereas gas, they are no, not in contact at all. And that's the arrangement. And as for separation, you can see that for solid, because they are closely packed, they are not separated at all. Whereas liquid, they are arranged, um, they are also separated, but not a lot. If you compare them, you will see that solid is arranged in a pretty good order. Whereas in liquid, the, ran the order which they are arranged is random. And for gas, as they are not packed at all, they are very separated. And the average separations between the particles is about 10 times their diameter. So that means the difference between this and this, the distance of it is more than 10 times the diameter of a gas particle. And as for the motion, because solid, they are closely packed. Therefore, particle in the solid, they don't move around. All they do at most is just that they will vibrate as they're being heated as we'll look into chapter 11 later. And as for liquid, they can move around. That's like how you can move the liquid around in your border. And of course, the speed of how fast the molecule moves depends on the temperature of the liquid. Whereas gas, they will just bounce off one another and off the walls and the container. So it's e either collide with other air particles or collide with the wall of a container or a wall. So attractive forces, because of the strong attractive force that solid has, the particles are closely packed, whereas um, the attractive force in liquid is more moderate, and in gas, there will be no force at all. 
and that's why the particles are far apart. And let's look into a term called Brownian motion that describes how the air particles move. So in 1827, there's a scientist called Robert Brown. He was using a microscope to study pollen grain, and he noticed that tiny particles of the grain sort of jiggling about means they are moving a little bit. And he thought that, you know, with the pollen grains, it's just, they are, they're still alive, therefore they are moving. But as they, he investigated tiny grain of dust, which is a non-living thing, he also observed that the dust moved around. And this leads him to discover, hey, why is it that these particles are moving? And then he discovered something called the Brownian motion, which means particles are constantly being struck by air particles, the movement of air particles. And when they're being hit, they seem to travel in a relatively random order. So in fact, you can investigate how the smoke particle move by using by doing this experiment. But to show you in animation, this is how brown emotion is like. The par smoke particles will just keep moving around, even though you can't really see what is moving around because it is the air particles that causes the, the movement of this brown emotion. So the dust particles are constantly knocked about by the fast moving particles of the air. So that's all about the brown emotion. And now we are going to dive deeper into the gases, the third type of matter. So the kinetic model can help us understand how gas behave, means how they move around. And this allows us to understand the following question. Why does gas cause pressure on the walls of the container? And second question, what happens when a gas when it is heated? And the other one, what happens when gas is compressed? So let's look into, let's answer each question. Why does gas cause pressure on the wall of container? If you remember pr pressure that we learned in chapter 8, we know that you can calculate pressure by measuring force divided by area. So that means Pressure is created when there is a force. And this is exactly what happened. The gas causes pressure on the wall because all these air particles, they are colliding with the wall of the container. And that's what creates, remember, you can calculate pressure using force divided by area. So when the air particle hits the container, it's gonna have force. And the area which they hit will be used to calculate what is the pressure. Second question about the gas, what happened to a gas when it is heated? So let's say I put a fire under this container. So the higher the temperature of the gas, we know that the faster the particles will move. And as a result, these gas particles will heat the wall more often, which result in higher pressure. Great. Third question, what happened when gas is compressed? Initially, the gas particles is like that. But as it is compressed, you can see that the air particles actually exist in, in a smaller space now. And because of the smaller space, now collision is more likely to occur, therefore results in higher pressure. So that's how, that's what happened when we do different things to gas, and that will help us to understand one law that's very important called Boyce Law, and which we'll talk about that in a while. But before that, let's understand um, how the movement of gas particles affects the temperature. So we learned that the higher the temperature, the faster the gas particles move because now the particles will have higher internal energy. And the temperature of an object is a measure of its kinetic of its particle, kinetic energy of its particles. It means the higher the air, the higher the kinetic energy of the air particles, the greater the temperature is going to be. So let's look into it. And when it comes to temperature, we know that there is something called a melting point and also the boiling point. So the melting point is the temperature which the solid starts to melt, which means the particle starts to break down, whereas the boiling point is the temperature which the liquid starts to get um, boiled into gas particles. And in order to calibrate the thermometer, all you need to do is just um, put the thermometer into ice, and then once you do that, you mark the point as zero, and then put again the thermometer into a hot water to mark it as 100 degrees Celsius. So, and once you got the point, you simply divide the difference by 100 
to get the calibration. So that's how you make a thermometer from scratch. Let's say you don't have the skill. And here, we, since we're studying temperature, there's another unit for temperature called Kelvin. So previously, we learned that absolute zero is the temperature at which particles have no kinetic energy. But that doesn't mean absolute zero doesn't mean zero degrees Celsius. It's, it means an even lower temperature called zero Kelvin, which is equivalent to negative 273 degrees Celsius. So temperature measured on Kelvin, the Kelvin scale, is called absolute temperature. And the Kelvin temperature can be calculated from the Celsius using this formula here. We simply use the temperature of the surrounding and then you sum it up with 273, you would have gotten the temperature in Kelvin unit. So I have a work example here. Cal they ask us to calculate the temperature in Kelvin of a classroom of 20 degrees Celsius. So what is 20 degrees Celsius in Kelvin? We simply use the formula Kelvin equal to 273, 73 plus temperature, which we got 293. And the formula, the unit for Kelvin is K. Second point, 800, again, I just use the formula 800 plus 273 equal to 1073 Kelvin. And last but not least, K equal to 273 plus 233. When you sum them all up, you will get 506 Kelvin. So if you look at all the answers, this is how you convert the temperature scale into Kelvin. All right, I think I made a mistake here. So this one should be negative 233. I didn't see this. So it should be negative 200, which will get us 40 Kelvin. So which is what happened exactly here. All right, so um, the next question, which is the same as what we just talked about, a lab thermometer has no temperature marking, which means it doesn't work. Describe how you could use ice and boiling water to calibrate the thermometer. And again, what you can do, you just put the thermometer into melting ice, then mark it as zero, and then put the thermometer again into boiling water and mark a point at 100 degrees Celsius and divide the space in between two marks into 100 equal parts. Each part will then be equal to one degree Celsius. And that's all about it. And let's look into the last part of this chapter, which is called the Boyce Law, which is related to gas. So Boyce Law states that the temperature, pressure, and also volume of a gas all affect each other. And the gas law explains mathematically how three affect one another. And when we talk about gas law, we have to assume two things. Means the first one is that the number, the amount of gas, regardless of how you change the volume, it should be the same. And the second point is pressure is caused by the collision of gas particles and the wall of the container. So um, this is data collected from a Boyce law experiment. So what they do is that they try to manipulate the pressure or the volume and then see how one and each relate to another. So for instance, you could change the volume of the gas particle from 60 to 48, and you will have seen that the pressure increases. And this is because the lower the volume of the container, the more frequently the air particle collide with the wall, resulting in higher pressure. So if you continue to decrease the volume, the pressure will increase. So in other words, we say that they have an inverse relationship. And what happened is that if you sum, what boys found out is that when you multiply pressure times volume in an ideal environment, you should often get the same values. And this leads boys to um, develop this law. And if we look at the graph of boys' law, you can see that as volume increases, pressure as volume decreases, pressure increases, but if you increase the volume instead, pressure will decrease. There's an inverse relationship on them. But if you were to use one over volume instead of volume, you would have gotten this straight line graph instead. And this is the formula that the experiments um, discover. You can find use the volume and pressure of one um, container and then compare it with another container. 
So Boyce found out that when he multiplied pressure by volume, he always get the same result. This means that you can always make two quantity equal. And the experiments conclude that the volume of a fixed mass gas is inversely proportional to its pressure. So let's try to do this work example to try to understand Boyce's law. A scuba driver releases a bubble of air. So imagine that this is the air particles that the scuba driver release. And the bubble has a volume of 2 cm cubed. And as he watches the bubble rise up to the surface, he realized that um, the atmosphere and the pressure increases from 5, sorry, increases from um, 5 to 1. So when the scuba driver releases the bubble, he has a pressure, the depth wedge he's in has a pressure of 5 atm. But then as the bubble goes up, the pressure of it become 1 at atm. In other words, it makes sense because in the previous chapter, we learned that pressure is related to depth. The deeper you are in the water, the higher the pressure you're going to experience. So what we need to find out is how big will this um, bubble be when it is at the top. So if we look at the answer, you can simply use the first pressure multiplied by the volume and let it be equal to the pressure here multiplied by the unknown volume. So if we can use 2 times 5 equal to 1 times the volume of the second bubble and you will have found that volume 2 will be equal to 10 cm cubed, meaning it's a lot bigger as compared to when the bubble is still at the bottom of the pool. And that's about it for this chapter. So in this chapter, we look into the three um, different types of matters and their properties, and we dive deeper into the characteristic of gas particles. We learn about Brownian motion and also now Boyce's law. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.